religion, though many of you are not familiar with the religion of El Islam, the religion that is open to all people, all ethnic groups, the religion that puts us in contact with ourselves and for some for the first time. So how, how do you raise the dead was a question that was asked by Prophet Ibrahim and the life of Prophet Ibrahim. It is a wonderful example of what all of humanity has to go through in terms of trying to make a final statement, a conviction to be consciously aware of what has transpired in their life before they come into the belief. And we say that belief, uh, we look at it in terms of saying Bill Gaib, Bill Gaib. And we mention this term so often, every so often, but it means to believe in the unseen. And regardless to who we are as believers in understanding the principles of El Islam, the fundamental beliefs of El Islam, we know in saying this word Bill Ghaib, it is definitely referring to the unknown. And it is a conviction that we are making in saying that though we can't see God, in that we are striving we are looking for direction and our intentions are to find our Lord, he will make that provision for us. But at first, when we come into this yearning, after being in the dark so long, after being dead in our character, in our mannerism, being dead as a man, as a woman, Almighty Allah, because it could be an inkling, besides the Quran and Scripture says, the size of a mustard seed. If you have the faith of a grain of mustard seed, Almighty God is with us. So the Quran, it has been granted to us, given to us through Muhammad ibn Abdullah, granting the teachings, giving the teachings, shining the light that all of the prophets that have ever lived, the light that they brought to humanity for thousands of years, it is ingrained, it is inscribed on the pages of Quran. So when we say the oneness of God, and that God has no wife, he has no sons, he has no daughters, but the light that he has put in the sky, the physical sky, the cosmos, the universe, that light is very symbolic to us. That light brings light. It separates us from the darkness. Although that is a physical light, but we look at it symbolically at the rays that come from the sun and shining throughout the world as we know it. And as we revolve, as the earth revolves around the sun, the earth benefits, the vegetation benefits, humanity benefits from those sun rays. As we move through the PLS, the physical, moral, and spiritual forms of development, or the mental or the intellectual forms of development, as we revolve around the truth, around the scripture, around the words of Quran. And as we study other books that came before the Quran, we see what Almighty God has given us in terms of enhancing our life, our lifestyle. And he gives us, he pulls us out of darkness. He pulls us out of the grave. And we see many people throughout America and throughout the world have been caught up in traps, have been caught up in darkness, and have been buried alive. But El Islam comes to give us life, to make a connection, and to show us what our father Adam went through, and to show us what our father Abraham went through. So Abraham, in his questioning, Almighty God, in trying to find and gain an understanding as to how to help his family, the family of men, but also wanting to worship properly also wanting to look at the creator, the one who is an authority, wanting to look at him properly. So let's read a few passages from Quran as we elaborate a little further on how to bring the dead to life. How to bring the dead to life. We seek refuge from Almighty God from the rejected enemy, Shaitan. And those of you who are familiar with the Quranic Arabic to some degree, we say in the Quranic Arabic, I would be laying in a Shaitan the regime. Simply meaning we seek refuge in Almighty God from the rejected enemy, the shaitan, the devil. From Surah 16, Ayat 84. One day we shall raise from all people a witness 
then will no excuse be accepted from unbelievers, nor will they receive any favors. When the wrongdoers actually see the penalty, then will it be in no way be mitigated, nor will they then receive respite. Here is a warning. Here is information. God is talking to us and warning us and giving us information as to how to conduct our lives and constantly showing us the path. From the same surah, surah 16, ayat 97. Whoever works righteousness, man or woman, and has faith verily to him, will we give a new life, a life that is good and pure, and we will bestow on such their reward according to the best of their actions. I'm going to read that one again. Whoever works righteousness, man or woman, and has faith, verily to him will we give a new life, a life that is good and pure, and we will bestow on such their reward according to the best of their actions. That should be good news, because in dealing and addressing the situation, the condition of women in the world, feeling and believing and knowing that they have been highly disrespected and saw as sexual tools, sexual objects, rather than to be seen as also as being devotees to Almighty God. Devotees, a wonderful, a wonderful word to ponder over and to think about because we are devotees and servants of Almighty God. And God has said, you can only relate to Him or come to Him as a servant. We can't go to God in any other manner other than as a servant, as a devotee. And as we stated earlier, he does not need our help. From Surah 87. But those will prosper who purify themselves and glorify the name of their guardian Lord and lift their hearts in prayer. Nay, behold, he preferred the life of this world. This is Ayat. 14, 15, 16, and 17. Nay, behold, ye prefer the life of this world, but the hereafter is better and more enduring. 18. And this is in the book of the earliest revelation, the books of Abraham and Moses. Suhufi Ibrahim wa Musa. This passage, this ayat, I read to you two weeks ago in speaking about the books of Abraham and Moses. And for those of you who missed that presentation, that dialogue, that discussion, that talk, we mentioned as to how Prophet Abraham was the first to receive the revelation in the form of a book. Though that isn't in print now, though that particular book, that particular revelation isn't here with us, but the essence, the essence of the book, the nectar, the nectar, of the book, the wisdom, the light that came to humanity. We have that on the pages of Quran, and we see much light and much understanding in the symbolic, pictorial writings in the book known as the Bible today, though we know that is not the book in terms of how Esau, Ibn Miriam, Jesus, the son of Mary, Christ Jesus, it is not in the form in which he had received the book as known as, known as the Gospel the angels, the angels. This is the proper name for that book in which Jesus Christ, our teacher, our prophet, and we say to you as Muslims, we love Jesus, but we also want you to understand that we do not embark upon mysticism, mysticism. No myth in the existence of God, no division in the, in the existence of our Almighty God, but in saying that God, is one having the sole power that God is the one who has created everything in existence. Now let's look at our father, Adam. It said that our father Adam in his falling from the heavens and his making a mistake, in his slipping, he and his wife, it says that they were cast down from the heavens. So he, our father and our mother, were born in the heavens. And here we are with this book, the Quran, that I read to you what God is saying. These are the words of God, where God is saying that he gives us a new life, 
a new life. And certainly being in America, those who are people of color, and certainly those who are oppressors of the people of color in America and throughout the world, those oppressors, they need this book just as bad as those who have been oppressed. That is the reason for the coming of the revelation that came to Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. So we have this book. We have a solution. We have a solution in that Almighty God has given us that which we mentioned Friday that establishes governments, that establishes leaders. And when you follow the principles and the guidance and the directions and the light and the understanding that the Quran gives us, you are a special person because you have made a decision in your life, though we all may have done wrong, and I'm pretty sure we have to some form in some fashion, but now God is giving us a new opportunity, bringing out the darkness from our minds, bringing us out of rooms of darkness, placing us in the light, gaining and getting as much light as we qualify, gaining and getting the understanding and the truth as much as we qualify for, and then whatever we qualify for, God is so merciful and so kind and so loving. He give us more than we deserve at times. And so now in that we have this life. We have to take care of our life. In that we have a responsibility. A responsibility certainly to God because everything goes back to God, the one God. But we have this responsibility of protecting of keeping our life purified. And we are going to cry sometimes. We're going to be full of pain sometimes. But when we recall the mercy and the majesty and the forgiveness and the glory of Almighty God, nothing can stop us. So we are a people who are poor. The people of color in America, very, very poor. Poor how? Because we know of people that make 100000 maybe a million a year. So how are we poor? There are some that are doing very good. We are referencing poor in the letter. What letter? Are you talking about graduating from college or from the universities? No, in the letter of scripture. When you rise up in the position, the status that you have, and you coming out of darkness, you are serving as an example to the rest of the world. People watch you as being a right-minded person. You are a wonderful example to your children, to your grandchildren, to your sisters, your brothers, your parents. You have decided to take a step in a position. You have taken a stand in trying to get truth to those who are hungry. This religion grants us, gives us, the opportunity to stand up and to be counted. And even if others don't want to count you, Almighty God has counted us. Almighty God is with us and we are being protected by his angels. Don't be so grounded just in your color, in your ethnicity, though we have been oppressed in this country. But look, we have too many examples among the unlettered throughout slavery that have made it and have taken a stance, and others even who despise them. And we don't have to name anybody, but you know enough history to know where we came from, and we know that there are those with education, with letters behind their name in terms of intellectual pursuit, finishing and having doctors and master's degrees, and that's a wonderful thing, to have an education, being a person of color, it assists you in your thinking and your logic, but we are going back to our father, Adam and Abraham. You have to understand that what is already in you, in your being, in your makeup, God has given you that which you need for success. All of the possibilities are within. You have the capabilities to do whatever is needed in order for you to be successful and to take care and to be responsible for yourself, for your family, for your neighborhood, for your country. She said, oh, this is not my country. Well, where's your country? We love Africa. But look, we are here. Don't you know God is in charge? Don't you know we are here for a reason? Don't you know if you rise up and you accept your plight, your job description, 
you will gradually come into the power, into the position, in authority, in the manner in which God wants his world, the world that he has created, the man, the woman that he has created. If you are obliging to who you are, if you adhere to your maker, to your existence, and you recognize that you didn't create anything, that we didn't create anything, that this world, this cosmos, this universe was given to us by God. So how then do we rise from the dead? How do we get up from the grave? By being obedient. By being obedient to the word, by being obedient to Almighty God. So Adam, after his fall, it says that Adam met a word from his Lord. He met a word from his Lord. How? You can meet new people. You can meet new people on the job in your neighborhood. Maybe you get new neighbors. Maybe just in social events. You can go out and meet people. But not meeting people, not meeting the word in these people, but meeting the word in terms of you conforming to the directions of Almighty God. Adam decided that he was going to conform. He had his mind. He understood that he was a thinker. He and his wife, the Adams, the Adams family, not the monsters that they show on TV, but the Adams family. So he understood that he had to conform to the purpose he was created for. We are to conform to the purpose that we are created for. If you, those of us who have been Muslim for some years, 20, 30 years, 40 years, and some of you are young people, you're gaining an understanding. Some of you, you speak the Arabic, you understand the Quranic Arabic, and you have wonderful minds. And you are going to make contributions to this country and to the world that we haven't even thought of. But in seeing that, it is good, it would be beneficial for you to listen to those with wisdom who have lived this. But when you are qualified, we know the story of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. When he put a 19-year-old in charge of a group of soldiers going back into Mecca. This young person was well qualified, and also to Medina, but this young person was well qualified. He was a believer. He believed in the real guy. What does this do mean believing? Me believing in the unseen, that which I cannot see. Me having faith. What does this do to me? Well, how does this help me? Just in our everyday life, even when we have no connection, no belief in God at all, but having a mother and father, knowing, well, I'm not worried about when I get out of school because mama, mama will fix this on me. Daddy is when I'm working, he's bringing it back grocery. Or if it's a single parent, we rely on our parents. That's having faith. We don't know if, if mama, daddy, or grandma, or whoever is our guardian. We don't know whether or not they're going to do that. We don't know what they might run into, but we have faith that our guardians, that our relatives are going to take care of us. Where well, God has made promises to us, and those of us of faith, we can see. We don't have to go all over the world. We don't have to lose, leave Louisiana. We don't have to leave Shreveport, Louisiana. We can look at the history of the African-American community in terms of those who are Muslim and see the progress that we have made. Progress isn't shown just in numbers. It is shown in our stance and our contribution to our neighborhood and our steadfastness. And then when we look at this religion and we think about the purpose in which God has created us for, he is giving us that which will enable us to return to our original form here. Yeah, I'm again talking about this form and our original posture. And I often ask the question, who are you? Who are we? How do we get to this point in terms of where we are? So we become much more successful, successful, pardon me, when we conform to the words of Almighty God and we meet this word. We accept this word. This word, this book. This is the book in it is guidance. Sure without doubt for those who are righteous, for those who believe, for those who have faith. So what part of that can you attach yourself to? Should be the all of it. 
It hit me down all of us. Some of us are going to achieve more than others. Some of us are going to take stands that others won't take stand. Some of us will realize that everything in this creation that has been created by man, it has a weakness. It will fall. We see building structures. I can recall looking in our city growing up, and I can recall neighborhoods and downtown structures and buildings that are gone. And in those times, I'm pretty sure that those who established those buildings, who had established those buildings, they believed that their business would last forever. But God has shown us how he reduced the control, the power, the gaining of money and material things. He has shown men that that would not last forever. Your sons, your daughters, your family members would not last forever. It is a test upon us. In every facet of life, all of us will go through different tests. All of us in our striving, we will be tested according to what we can bear. And we are constantly told in all the religions that God does not place on you a burden that you can't bear, though we might fear that, hey, I can't handle it. I'm ready to bail out. This thing is too rough for me. I can't handle it. But God is showing us that we will stop and listen and be patient. That the future is ours. We can live through our children in the sense that if we pave the way for them, they will be those who will establish, even in further, our far further generation, they will be those who will establish the truth, who will establish the mindset, the man, the woman that God wants us to be. That's what our father Adam eventually became. You see the fullness in the life of Prophet Muhammad. The fullness of all of those who came before him. You see the establishment. You see the completion, the completed form, the completed mind, the intellectual order that God wanted for this first man. But Allah, God, was telling the angels, I know that which you know not. He was talking about this Khalifa that he was going to create in the earth. Are you listening? This was a leader that God was placing in the life, in this creation, in this environment of the man, of the mind, of the man, of the intellectual order of man, this man that he was creating. But when he created Adam, it wasn't complete. That was only the beginning. So when we first come into the world, we're not complete. We're an effort, we're a child, and we grow as a toddler. We go through the various stages before we become adults. But in scriptorial language, our growth and our development, our maturity, and our reproduction, it has to do with us sharing what we have in supporting leadership. The leadership in the household, the leadership of the mother, the father, the leadership in the community life. Though we may not be popular for taking stances that are a benefit to all, we still have to take that stance. PM to stand. And so here I am believing in the Bill Guy, the Bill Guy, this unseen. But I'm having faith that God will eventually bring me to see him. And again, not that we see each other, but that we see our purpose. We see his power. We see what he has manifested. And you can see in your hard work and your striving, whatever your profession is or has been, you can see where you started out in being a trainee, where you started out in terms of elements, elementary school, how you gradually learn to add and to subtract. And I was telling one of the brothers yesterday, this book I was reading, that was recommended by Imam Walter D. Muhammad. It's called How the Brain Works. And just briefly, this author was talking about two young boys and say that in terms of arithmetic, that they were very shallow, had very little knowledge of arithmetic. And then we know we start talking about arithmetic, we're talking about mathematics and there are different phrases. We start talking about the physics, the calculus, and things of this nature, algebra, algebra, a term that comes from the Muslim. And so, but yet still, these two little boys had been engaged as to having little or next to no knowledge in terms of the understanding of mathematics. So this author, I was to this author was saying, 
But the same two little boys can be taken, or have been taken, out on the playground. Don't let any know anything about geometric shapes. One could take a football and hurl it through the air. And as the ball is just revolving and turning, he could pinpoint where he was going to throw that ball. Might have been a 20 yard down and out, a button hook, and the ball would be right there. If the ball was out of position in terms of where the receiver had to catch it, that receiver, the little boy that was receiving the ball, could make an adjustment. Say, now, how is it that they could be running down the field after one throws the ball with such velocity? that the other one can gaze, looking through the air in terms of where to be, and could make an adjustment in terms of leaping up in the air and catching the ball. Well, to others, they might not seem as if that's mathematics, but here's a person that's dealing with geometry. Here's a person that's dealing with distance. See, so he was saying that more so, what you are seeing that's built inside of you, that God has put something inside of us naturally, that leads me to say to you, that God has put something in us naturally to cause us to identify with our nature, with the creation, with plants. And it says that man is what? Created like a plant. So there's some striving to be considered in terms of what we are to do with what we have. So we have been prepared for this. Though every day is a learning stage for the righteous, for the believers, not just a Muslim, but certainly for the Muslim, because I'm addressing you, but those who are non-Muslims who are viewing us for the first time, who have viewed us before, I commend you, because you are searching and you are looking, and we need your help. We need the help of right-minded people to assist, to support right-minded people in leadership. And whoever that leadership comes from, and as I started off reading, it said that God will raise up one in your nation, in your community, in your city, in your home. Support that person. And the leadership isn't always going to be accepted. If you are in leadership, just even in the household, you don't have to be a community leader, you're going to catch it. You're going to have some difficulties. There are going to be some that will balk you. There will be some that you can't even trust. Oftentimes, even in your own household, that's painful. But nevertheless, God has said to us, the believers and those who are striving with their person, those who are striving with their belongings, he is with us. And this final reading and coming to a close from Surah 8, Ayat 71. Let's, let's look at that for a moment. Because it's, it's very important that you know that you have help and that you have assistance. And it reads, 871. But if they have treacherous designs against thee, O apostle, they have already been in treason against God. And so has he given thee power over them. And God, and Allah, is he who has full knowledge and wisdom. So we are already victorious. How often have we heard the passage where it says, Ka'aflaha mu'minun, already the believer is successful. Already the believer is victorious. It just matters, I mean, it's just a matter of time in terms of when you're going to decide to go up and get your, it's beyond the Academy Award. When will you go get your reward? When will you claim your reward? Or what God awards us. So these passages from Quran, they assist us in understanding our creation, how we were originated. We, need, we have all we need to know with reference to our creation, how we maintain and how to maintain our life. And believe it or not, the shaitan, the devil, do you know that the shaitan is actually working in a way really to push us and to drive us to our Lord. Not his intention, his thing is to try to show or to prove God is wrong about his creation. But the test, the lies, the difficulties, the things that are placed before us by this corrupt world, this corrupt world, and I'm saying it in such a way and hoping and believing that you understand that I'm saying I'm talking about the corrupt world, but letting you know that God has created a world that is good a world that is peaceful, certainly in the hereafter, but right now in this life where you are, 
So you don't have to be miserable. You should remove yourselves away from those things that bring you harm and discomfort and break your peace. You have to learn how to accept what is beneficial to you and to your family. Sometimes even removing yourself away from injustice, from corruption, oftentimes it is, I'm saying. It is beneficial to you and to your soul and to the washing and to the purification of your mind and your being that you remove yourself away from those things that are causing destruction in your life. And that's the position of the believer. That's what we have to do. So it might hurt us sometimes that we have to pull back from those that we love or pull back from the neighborhood or pull back from the community. Not that you have to leave your household, but again, will you take a stand? Will you accept the new life that God has given you by you being a believer? Will you accept that there's a responsibility? If you want Shreveport to grow, or your city, wherever you reside to grow, you're going to have to become a part of that. You're going to have to become a warrior. I don't mean picking up a weapon, some physical weapon, and fighting in that manner, but taking a stance. That should be the last result of taking someone's life and that you didn't give them life for the first time. But as a believer, as a thinking person, as a thinking man, as a thinking woman, as a believing man, as a believing woman, you have the case of capabilities of changing this city and avoid the thing in terms of thinking, I'm going to just change this for so-called white people, so-called black people. But for the citizens of Shreveport, you can make a difference. Support those who have your interest at hand. And we say that when you look, at the Quran, in reading the Quran, there's a passage that says, we hear and we obey. We have people that are projecting that in their leadership, and they will be projecting that in their leadership to hear and obey. Hear and obey who? Certainly to God first. But you as a person that supports the leadership, when you hear this type of mind saying, I'm hearing you as a citizen, and I want to conform to what you need in terms of keeping this city structurally sound, Things have happened in the past, but God has allowed us to bring about a change because we are accepting the light that he gives us in this new life. Peace be unto you. Thank you for viewing Islamic Perspective, A Call to Freedom. Assalamu alaikum. Comments, questions? Right here. Yes, sir. Uh, may I kind of uh, cover at least half of uh, maybe even all of it, just at the end, when you were closing out, uh -huh. all right, uh, I grew up, you know, in a Christian church, all right? Okay. Now, uh, okay, the Quran teaches us that the shaitan is the most subtle of creatures, mm -hmm. okay? It also says that Allah is also, okay? It's also uh, what? No, all subtle. Mm. Allah is all so. Now, uh, I don't know. And then, I was hearing someone say it over the years. This is kind of, you know, a reason something I want to work on. You know, uh, was, over the years, someone, the devil power, the devil power. Mm -hmm. you know? And then, and also, growing up in the Christian church, maybe, maybe not that second what the crucifix means. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Okay. Well, think about it in terms of even what we discussed last week, but I, I know that you read and study the Quran. Uh, but remember, one passage that I read last week was where even the shaitan was saying, I have no power over you. I simply call you. And so although he's, he's known as being subtle, but again, he has no control over you other than the power that you give him. So the subtleness in talking about uh, Shaitan and comparing that with, with Allah being subtle, I don't know how that was how that was stated, but we know in terms of positiveness, in terms of God does things for us that we are not aware that he's doing. He protects us in ways that we are not aware of in terms of what he's doing. So uh, just in saying that he has no control and no power over us, you know, other than what we give him, and that Allah is the one that's totally in charge, in, in charge. so it's according to our thinking and what we perceive and how we perceive. But Satan is not equal to Faith Almighty Allah in power. Faith and obedience. Yes. I, I yeah. Really yeah. 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 Uh -huh. yeah. 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 Y
that's all you need. And now, the crucifix question, that, that, that would take too long, wouldn't it? What do you mean? What, what about the crucifix question? Okay, uh, now you read some old, let me see. Uh, nation, let me see how it goes. I was reading, what was I reading? I think it was even on W.D. Muhammad. Mm -hmm. uh, it may have been before he became a leader. I was reading uh, one of his books. I think he was talking about uh, how the crucifix is loaded with evil. The way the way that we are taught in terms of in terms of our understanding that there are steps, and when Imam Muhammad came in office, there were various steps that he was taking to get us to a point where we understood and we could accept the Quran and his teaching. But it was something gradual because we had been taught so long certain ideologies in the nation of Islam. So. It was a method that he was using to rid our minds of those things that weren't Quranically based, uh, coming from the standpoint of how Islam actually is. So the crucifixion, he's taught, he taught on the crucifixion in a lot of different ways, but saying most of the crucifixion was symbolic of how that those who claim to be Christians, how the knowledge that they received, that knowledge had been crucified, and that the minds of people, he, he did a thing one time about the hands, and they would, I mean, some things that were taught in the nation, we held on to, because they were still a great benefit. So we spoke about how the minds uh, had basically been raped, how the hands have been tied down, the hands are symbolic of your work, how the feet have been tied down in terms of a nail to a cross. You are not able to go in certain places physically uh, as a person, as a human being. Uh, your head in terms of the knowledge and the light and the understanding of scripture. It had been taught to you as a people uh, because you were oppressed, you were enslaved. So it has a lot of different meanings in terms of the crucifixion. And so the crucifixion of the word of God, the crucifixion of the words of Jesus. So that was destroyed. So it's taught that no, the Quran says no, Jesus wasn't, he wasn't killed, he wasn't crucified. You know, we, he went up to God. Just as if someone does something to your physical body, they might destroy your physical body, but your faith, your soul, they can't destroy that, you know. So in that light, just briefly, that's what he was. That's what he was talking about. But not not an actual crucifixion of Jesus, but a crucifixion of the manner in which he presented religion and uh, the teachings, the two teachings that came to us, you know. So so I, I cut it uh, because in in our studies and being talked about Imam, you know, say sometimes you can't give the person all. Leave them some room to think on their own. And I know you're thinking because you write different little papers and you give them to me and we look at them, you know. Uh, but in, in teaching, you leave some room for the student to do more research and more thinking. So when someone is talking to you or when a lawyer talks to us, we have to pull back and ponder what he's saying to us and put it in a manner in which it will benefit us more so, you know. So that's that's a part of the crucifixion. You remember, you remember the time people say, uh, you might hear the statement, I'm going to crucify you. You know, they're talking about killing you. But remember, I always put before y'all physical, moral, and spiritual. You can be crucified on all those levels if you allow it. Because the law gives us choice. Yeah. It gives us choice. Uh, Sister, uh, Sister Lee, I'm really glad to see her. Uh, she brought some goodies. Now, when y'all go in the back, be careful because some of you can't have a lot of sugar. And uh, we don't want you to get sick when you go back there with that pastry. I see Bilal back there smiling, and I see my grandson over there. I want y'all to be real careful, because you know, y'all have weak stomachs. A large part. And there are no, no uh, comments, and, and as you know, uh, we want to keep it, keep it before before you. I want you to spread the word. But our brother, Brother Jaron, is, is uh, uh, running for mayor. You know, and so, so we hope he has some, some tennis and keep his legs strong, where he can run a real good race, and we're going to try to support him in any kind of way that we can. We met yesterday uh, here at the Messi, and he had a, uh, I think it was the first strategy meet that he had, but he's been a lot of uh, support from others that, that are involved in, in city government or that he worked with uh, before, but it's an effort uh, that he's making because he's trying to help bring about a change uh, in the city, and he's strongly convicted in terms of what he's doing. And so he actually had thought about it even before this time, uh, only the last time we talked about it, a few years or so ago, he didn't pursue it then in terms of how he's doing it now. But we want to try to support him. We can't be uh, political as a community, but as individuals, we can get the brother support and uh, doing whatever we can. Inshallah. So, uh, well, dear, we need to hear your voice. Uh, uh, I want you to make the call today.
but maybe okay. at the end of it, inshallah. And that's something we want to. That's something we want to do. We want the mothers to learn uh, to make the, to make the call. And I appreciate uh, uh, Brother Bilal. He's he's always right there, and oftentimes you might say, "Was well, might be some things you don't understand," but he's always always right there, willing to volunteer and do whatever he can. In terms of assisting this community and assisting me, and I appreciate him for that. My love, my wife, and the work that everyone does. So. Yeah, did y'all know where this boy came from? Did I ever tell you where this boy came from? You remember? Huckabee. Huckabee. Here at Huckabee bought us this, this, this board when we were down on uh, Douglas Street in the bottom. And on the back, it's, it's painted, but it was back there. That, that symbol we used to use during the first had the cross and all of that. Uh, we painted over that. But this was a board that he bought us when we were down in the bottom. And, you know, yeah, here uh, that they dedicated the street after, you know, after him. But they did a lot of work in the street. Say the street board. 